Our third talk this morning is from Ed White from AIM Photonic, where he is the Associate Vice President for Test, Assembly and Packaging, also known as TAP Facility. Ed is also Chairman of the National Photonics Initiative, NPI. In addition to these duties, he is focused on identifying companies who will participate and benefit from improvement in photonics integrated chip manufacturing generally educating the community about the merits of photonic integrated devices and increasing membership in AIM Photonics, securing AIM Photonics sustainability for the long term. Ed is a native of New York State and began his career at Kodak after receiving a Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering from the University of Rochester. He later went on to earn an Executive MBA from the University of Rochester as well. His primary responsibility at AIM is for the TAP business located in Rochester, New York, and his talk today is an update on some of the critical projects currently running at that facility. Remember to submit your questions for this talk through the email indicated below or through the Submit Your Question button on our event webpage. Thank you. Hello, my name is Ed White. I have responsibility for AIM Photonics Test Assembly and Packaging Facility, um, also known as TAP. Thank you for attending the session. Um, although TAP has been up and operating for a while now, there's always attendees in these types of sessions who are learning about TAP for the first time. Um, so given that, I thought it might be good to break this session into three parts. The first part, for those people who are less familiar with TAP, I'll take this opportunity to share a brief high-level overview of the facility and its capabilities. Second, I want to highlight a couple of capabilities that we haven't talked a lot about, um, but they're important capabilities. And then finally, I'll share information that we are frequently asked um, about as customers engage us. This information is associated with work that we've done and are doing for customers. Of course, I'm not at liberty to share the specific details of our customer work, but uh, this section is intended to convey learnings that might help you have a, success, um, a successful packaging engagement with TAP. So with that, let's get started. Um, we're located in Rochester, uh, New York, and we're part of the AIM Photonics uh, organization. There are two facilities associated with AIM Photonics, one located in Albany, New York, and that's our Silicon Fab. And then this facility located in Rochester, New York, which is the testing, uh, packaging, and assembly facility. Um, this facility has capabilities for integrated photonics and microelectronics uh, packaging. So on this slide, you can see um, what the facility layout is. Um, it's uh, two floors, we're in about 30,000 square feet. Um, on the fourth floor, we have both uh, a clean room and our subfab, subfab being the uh, place where uh, much of our equipment is located that is operated in the clean rooms. And on the fifth floor are uh, three clean rooms. Um, each of these clean rooms, the larger clean rooms, are about 3,900 square feet, 3,700 square feet. And the one clean room, um, which is our metrology clean room in the upper right-hand corner of the uh, fifth floor, um, is um, our metrology and optics lab. Um, on the right-hand side, you can see um, images of both of these um, um, uh, clean room types um, in, this, uh, in these pictures. Um, the the whitish background pictures are our optics and metrology lab, and the yellowish colored pictures are those that represent um, the main clean rooms. We have about 12,000 square feet of class 1,000 clean room. In our, optic, in our optics and metrology lab, or in our failure analysis lab, we have a significant amount of equipment and tools, um, as you can see in this slide. Uh, everything from ellipsometers to x-ray fluorescent tools, to spectrometers, to microscopes, to x-ray tomography and um, scanning electron microscopes. So um, we have a lot of capability um, and um, uh, to help us both in failure analysis as well as um, analyzing uh, processes. 
Um, one of our main clean rooms um, on, the, on our fourth floor um, houses what we typically call our packaging um, uh, clean room uh, uh, tools. Um, this has um, both our, our flip chip bonder, our wire bonder, and it also um, houses our uh, SMT line. Um, and we have a full uh, SMT line along with um, shear testers and pull testers and uh, PCB circuit board uh, routers. On the fifth floor, we have um, a capability for uh, metallization um, and plating. And keep in mind that this facility is um, uh, not only a uh, integrated photonics facility, but it's a microelectronics facility. Um, and um, plating and metallization is an important aspect of, um, of both of those um, uh, areas. So we have uh, capability all the way from lithography uh, through uh, sputtering, uh, through pl uh, plating. This allows us to not only plate um, and sputter, but also allows us to bump, and you'll be hearing a little bit more about our um, bumping process um, in the middle section of this presentation. Um, in our uh, fifth floor west uh, clean room, um, we have uh, capability to, um, to do a number of things. Um, this is probably our most full and most busy uh, uh, clean room. Um, we have our fiber attach tool, um, which allows us to attach single fibers as well as fiber arrays, and you'll hear a little bit more about uh, that capability. Um, as well as um, we have uh, dicing capability on this floor. And as you can see, we have from the uh, image, we have not only mechanical dicing, uh, sawing, um, we have a disco um, uh, dicing saw here, um, but we also have uh, plasma dicing and, uh, and laser dicing. So this gives us uh, quite uh, significant capability um, to, uh, to dice, and I'll talk a little bit more about um, our dicing capability as, uh, as we go on in this presentation. We also have in this uh, clean room uh, capability to um, address uh, fiber. So fiber um, cleaving, uh, fiber polishing, um, and um, uh, as I mentioned before, um, fiber attach. Um, we also have uh, 3D inspection capability, um, as well as reflow um, uh, capability for, um, for our bumping. Um, you'll notice that the uh, reflow um, is in yellow where the rest of these boxes are in green. Um, the, uh, the green represents um, up and operational now. Uh, the yellow uh, represents um, uh, in the process of being um, qualified and ready for uh, development. Uh, so we have a little bit uh, of a distance to go on the reflow oven, um, as well as on the previous slide, the uh, co track. Some examples of our capability um, uh, are listed on this slide. Um, and I'm just gonna go through these uh, fairly uh, briefly. Um, but um, the, we have the capability to uh, attach fiber, uh, single mode fiber, um, as well as uh, fiber arrays. Um, and we can also uh, attach uh, polarization maintaining fiber, um, as long as that fiber is in a, um, an array form. Um, we will have capability to rotate fiber. Um, however, our tool um, is uh, waiting for a couple parts to be installed. Uh, unfortunately, COVID has limited the ability for some of our vendors to come on site. But as soon as they're able to come back, we will be adding a rotator to our fiber attach tool, and we'll have the capability to do single fiber um, polarization maintaining. Um, all of our fiber attach is uh, done with active al alignment. Um, we have uh, flip chip capability um, in this facility. Um, that's both photonic and electronic flip, flip chipping. Um, and um, our flip chip um, is a Femto2, a, um, a fine tech Femto2. And um, that it means that we have thermal, um, sonic and compression, um, with a placement uh, accuracy um, of uh, half a micron. Um, we can probe fiber, uh, excuse me, probe wafers, um, both for uh, optical, uh, RF, and DC. Um, we can dice 
Um, we can dye standard thickness wafers, um, to the, which are nominally about 775 microns thick. Um, and we can also dice uh, thin wafers um, down to about um, 100 microns uh, thick. Um, for uh, dicing, um, when we're talking about mechanical dicing, uh, the typical street that we're seeing, dicing street, is around um, uh, 100 microns, but can go up to uh, anything that the customer wants, 150 or 200 microns. Um, but uh, stops at roughly about um, 100 microns wide for mechanical dicing. However, for our plasma and laser dicing, we can go down to 10 to 15 um, microns. Uh, dye attach, conductive or non-conductive adhesives are available. And um, we can also wire bond. Um, wire bonding, uh, we typically will wire bond with uh, gold wire. Um, and uh, one to two mil uh, gold wire is available. Um, with uh, various uh, pitches on the pad. So um, I'll talk a little bit more about that when we get to the end of this presentation, uh, because that's a uh, uh, frequently asked question on what are your pad sizes that you can handle and what is the pitch. For metalization, um, we can, um, as I mentioned before, we can plate as well as sputter. And uh, this gives you an indication of the metals we can plate and sputter copper tin, silver, palladium, nickel, uh, gold, um, and we can also um, uh, sputter, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, these metals, um, including uh, titanium, uh, ty tungsten, copper, nickel, palladium, and nickel. Um, um, and, our and our plating operation on our electrolytic plater is up and uh, running, um, and we will be bringing our electrolyst plater um, up and running uh, uh, soon. Uh, bumping, I'm going to talk a little bit more about bumping in the middle part of the presentation, but bumping is the capability um, that we're adding, um, and um, there's a fair amount of customer interest um, in, uh, in bumping. I'll talk about the pitches um, as we get um, a little bit further along in this presentation. And then finally, um, we have um, you know, a number of uh, metrology tools uh, from microscopy to spectroscopy to profilometry. We have a, a scanning electron microscope and x-ray tomography, x-ray fluorescence, IR acoustic, and we have bit error rate testing. So we have, you know, you can see extensive capability um, in the facility to do um, not only integrated photonics, um, but also microelectronics. Um, and um, we um, uh, also have capability to, um, um, to do um, failure analysis for customers. Um, one thing worth mentioning um, for our uh, metrology and testing area, you don't necessarily need to do packaging with us. Um, we're, we're content to do um, failure analysis and metrology and testing for you um, simply as a, as a service as well. So that gives you a brief overview of um, our, our, our capabilities at a, a very high level. And um, I um, wanted to now move on to um, our, uh, a couple of our capabilities that we haven't talked a lot about in the past that I thought um, um, uh, the attendees of the seminar might be interested in and customers in general might be interested in. Um, that's uh, testing um, as well as uh, bumping we're gonna talk about um, in this section. Um, our testing capability, as I, as I kind of highlighted in the previous slide, um, is, is extensive. Um, specifically, um, in our testing area, you can see images of our uh, various uh, tools uh, here uh, in the uh, uppermost um, uh, slide, or uppermost image, um, is our prober. This is a Ficon Tech um, uh, prober, as well as this, the image to the right of that um, is, the, uh, is an image of the stage uh, that the 300 mic, uh, millimeter uh, wafer um, would sit on. Um, we have a number of tools that are shown here um, in this uh, center picture, and then also tools um, in this lower uh, picture. So specifically in our testing area, we, um, I will go through um, each one of the tools we have in, a, in uh, two slides that are coming up. Um, but um, generally we have a wafer die and gel pack uh, probing capability. 
we have a large optical table um, that you can actually see uh, equipment set on in that middle uh, image. Um, in, on the optical table, we have video microscope um, that assists in the probing. We have three axis stages for fiber and DUT. Um, we have uh, also three axis rotational stage um, that's used for development processes. Um, our state of the art test equipment includes laser sources, which we'll go into a little bit more detail on as we go forward, photo detectors and power meters, um, optical amplifiers, uh, modulators, analyzers, and uh, data collection um, equipment and tools. Relative to the test equipment, um, we have, um, as I mentioned, um, um, a variety of uh, testing tools. At a high level test standpoint, um, we have uh, various analyzers from uh, light wave um, uh, components, uh, optical modulation, optical spectrum analyzers, uh, digital communication analyzers, um, as well as uh, uh, high capacity DC power supplies. Um, and all of these tools, if I didn't mention it already, are um, installed up and operational and uh, ready for business. Um, in terms of our laser sources, um, we have tunable uh, lasers, uh, laser source um, from 14, 50 nanometers to, uh, to 16, 50 nanometers, high power with low SSE. And um, we also have a high power laser that uh, covers the area of, um, the spectrum from 12, 60 nanometers to, to 13, nanometers, and also for another one from 1500 uh, nanometers to 1630. Um, and then two additional high power uh, lasers um, that are 1310 and uh, 1575. Uh, optical amplifiers in the C and the L band, um, and then uh, some pre and um, um, uh, boost amplifiers. Um, and then we have uh, BERT uh, and um, uh, AWG uh, uh, capability, the 64 uh, uh, gigabaud uh, serial BERT and a 32 gigabaud uh, parallel BERT um, capability. And then finally, in our test uh, area, we have uh, a number of optical modulators. I won't walk through each one of them. Um, but suffice to say that we uh, have, we cover quite a range in terms of uh, transmitters and, and modulators. Um, and then we have um, uh, photo detectors and power meters as well. Um, you know, fast uh, power sensor module um, that uh, operates in the 1250 to 1640 range. And then another one that operates in the 970 to 1650 uh, range. And then uh, high count optical switches um, all the way down to a 40 gigahertz uh, optical detector. And uh, last but not least, I've already mentioned this, um, we have the FICON Tech uh, TL2500 um, uh, prober, um, and uh, that is the tool that I showed you at the very beginning of this um, uh, overview. Those last few slides describe our testing um, uh, and uh, metrology capability, and we're looking forward to um, you know getting a, a rush of uh, uh, new customers that uh, fully utilize this capability. We utilize it in house um, for our process development, but um, we also um, have uh, time available um, for external use as well. I want to move on to uh, bumping um, uh, capability. And, um, you know, as we look at uh, dense um, I.O., um, the need for dense I.O., uh, bumping is, um, you know, uh, quite important. And um, we think that offering this capability domestically um, will be of uh, high interest uh, to uh, not only those uh, uh, defense-related customers that are working on, you know, DARPA type of programs, um, but also uh, commercial customers um, that um, are working um, to put commercial products on the market. So um, the upper um, uh, left-hand part of the slide um, describes the capabilities that we have um, to uh, provide um, uh, uh, bumps on 300 millimeter wafers. And I should mention that our bumping capability is wafer bumping um, and not um, individual uh, coupon or individual die bumping. Um, but um, uh, this describes a, a number of the processes. 
Um, and you'll notice that there are three boxes that are um, red, uh, highlighted in red with red um, uh, boxes around them. These are tools that are not quite up uh, and operational, um, and we're doing a little bit of work to stand those up, um, but um, uh, we will have those operational uh, soon, um, and we'll be able to uh, fully bump um, um, when those tools are operational. We've already started doing some development um, by using another one of our tools other than our code track, which is our ability to put down photo resist with a, um, with a laminate. Um, and you can see images on the bottom of this page of some of the work that has already been done uh, on the 100 micron pitch uh, bumps, um, as well as 50 micron pitch bumps. Um, and our bumping capability roadmap um, has us going um, from uh, entering uh, this capability and offering uh, at 100 micron pitch uh, down to approximately 50 micron pitch um, then down to 30 micron pitch. So we, we know that there's um, a fair amount of demand at both 50 and 30 microns, um, and particularly uh, interest in um, uh, domestic uh, sources for uh, these uh, more densely pitched um, uh, bumps. So I, 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 I want to stop there and, um, and, and just say that uh, both uh, the uh, testing capability that I highlighted um, as well as the bumping capability that I just uh, walked through um, are uh, capabilities that we're looking forward to um, offering uh, to the market in the, the next uh, few months. This part of the uh, um, presentation is focused on um, addressing questions that are uh, frequently asked um, when uh, new customers uh, come to TAP. And I thought by going through some of this customer work and answering some of the questions that we hear frequently from customers, that it may help um, uh, folks uh, in the audience um, as they look at, um, you know, uh, um, you know, the answers are, or they hear the answers to some of the questions um, that are asked by many of the uh, customers. So first I want to uh, address uh, die mounting. Um, customers often come to us and say they want uh, fiber attached. Um, and the response is, off, is, is always the same, which is, yes, we can do that for you. Um, but um, it'll also include uh, a need for mounting of your die. Um, and the die mounting um, is required for nearly every packaging process we do. And mounts can be either custom designed or commercially available. From a custom design, you know, the customer can provide their own die mounting, whether they want that to be um, um, on a, uh, a, a metal mount or a glass mount or a, um, um, or a standard uh, uh, LLC, which is commercially available, leadless chip carrier. Um, for the LLC. And then there's often shims required to get the die to a height that allows um, something like fiber attached to be done. Um, so uh, we're, we can accommodate uh, ceramic shims, you know, silicon shims, metal shims, glass shims, um, and they're used to adjust the height of the die to enable downstream processes. And that picture on the right, um, I highlighted this. Um, this is actually a fiber attach, and you can see light launched into a, um, a, a die. But uh, this is an indication of a mount that goes underneath the die to raise the die, but also provides a strain relief um, for um, the uh, fiber, in this case, a single fiber um, that's coupled into the waveguide. This brings us to uh, fiber attach. And we're, you know, this is, as I mentioned before, we're, this is one of our busiest areas. And we're often asked um, a number of questions as customers come in that need fiber attach uh, work done. Um, so we can attach single fibers, um, you know, SMF or ultra high NA um, as examples. Um, and we can attach fiber arrays. Um, and we're seeing increased number of fiber uh, requests for fiber arrays and probably less um, request uh, now for single fibers. Um, all single fibers and arrays are actively aligned, so we don't really do any passive alignment here. Um, we uh, launch light into the fiber and we read light out of the waveguide or another fiber that's in a loop back. 
Um, and that allows us to actively align um, the fiber array or the single fiber with the waveguide. Uh, we can accommodate um, uh, different diameters of fiber, 80 micron fiber we've done, 125 micron fiber um, can uh, both be accommodated. For fiber arrays, uh, a, uh, there's uh, really a, uh, a default standard that has um, um, come to be. And um, uh, in terms of pitch, uh, 127 uh, micron pitch and 250 micron pitch have become pretty much standards um, for um, uh, fiber array attach. Um, easy, um, uh, you know, it's easy to obtain fiber arrays um, from uh, commercial suppliers at these uh, pitches. Um, for single fiber attach, a pitch of between 435 to 500 microns is a good target uh, to, to use. Um, when we're doing fiber attach, a means to measure the coupled light into, um, at, that have been, has been coupled into the waveguide um, is, is a requirement. And it can be a variety of ways. It can be a loop back, it can be a photo detector, uh, it can be a through path to the other side of the die, it can be a grating, um, a couple, light coupled out of a grating. Um, but when we launch light into a fiber that's being, or a fiber array that's being coupled to a die, we need to read the, um, uh, the light that has been coupled uh, to, uh, to maximize that light and to do the alignment um, and to determine the loss um, uh, in, the, in the coupling. Um, if you're thinking about loopback configurations, um, they're very effective for us to use to um, align. And um, we'd ask that you consider a loopback that um, uh, is widely pitched. And what I mean by that is if you have a eight channel fiber array, you know, looping um, ch channel fiber number one and fiber number eight is better for us than looping uh, fiber number um, uh, five and six or five and seven. Um, so getting um, um, as much space between the input and the output in a loopback um, is, uh, is helpful. Um, our standard wavelength for active alignment is uh, 1550 uh, nanometers. Um, and, um, and we can accommodate um, other um, wavelengths, um, but we will uh, need to have a source um, for that uh, other wavelength and we'll need to have a detector uh, for that as well. Um, and then um, fiber arrays are attached to dye um, with uh, index match uh, UV adhesive. Um, we're often asked um, for uh, new customers, you know, how is the uh, fiber array or the fiber affixed to the, the dye? And we use um, an index matched UV adhesive. And then we use a different UV adhesive for the strain relief. Um, so it, we're not so concerned about uh, index matching uh, for the strain relief. Um, our dicing capability, um, uh, we, as I mentioned um, in the overview, we have uh, mechanical sawing capability, plasma dicing, and laser dicing. Um, typical dicing streets for sawing are greater than um, 100 uh, microns. Um, and both uh, wafers and coupons can be sawn. So if you're working with our FAB in Albany and um, you're on an MPW run, a uh, multi-project wafer uh, run, and you're delivered coupons, which uh, may have um, uh, multiple chips on one coupon. Um, if you send them to uh, TAP after they're fabbed in Albany, uh, we can dice them into the separate uh, die for you. Um, and uh, I, we can also do, if you have a custom run, um, we can do uh, your whole wafer. Or if you have a wafer from any other fab, um, we're happy to work on that as well, or coupons from any other fab, we're happy to do work there. I would remind you that mechanical sawing creates a lip on the edge of the die. This is because if the die has a dicing street of 100 microns, for example, and we dice it with a 50 micron blade so that we stay away from the facet that, um, at the end of the waveguide, it will have a 25 micron lip on each side of the kerf. Um, and so that must be, that lip must be accounted for um, when attaching uh, fiber arrays. We do have, um, as I mentioned, the plasma dicing uh, capability and the plasma dicing 
um, uh, get, affords the opportunity to completely remove that lip and have uh, much similar to a microscope slide uh, type of configuration where the edge is completely vertical with, with no lip. Uh, so if, if that's important to you, we do have that uh, capability here um, at TAP. Um, the next area I wanted to address is wire bonding. Uh, ball bonding is, our mo is most frequently used um, we bond uh, one and two millimeter gold wire. Um, uh, we can also bond um, uh, aluminum wire. Um, and for the gold wire ball bonding, uh, 75 micron square pads are typical um, at 100 micron pitch, um, and that's typical. Um, one uh, thing that um, uh, we've seen lately um, are customers who have come to us with a very long lengths of wire. Um, but keep in mind when you're doing your design that you should really work to keep your wire length between three and four millimeters um, in length. And when you calculate that length, it also should include the drop from a higher uh, um, uh, position die to a, a board or to another uh, die if you're going die to die, um, because it's the length along the wire that's important to us. Long wires have a tendency to sag, particularly if you're working with one mil or a half a mil wire, um, and sagging wires um, are prone to shorting. Um, we do have encapsulation capability, but um, we'd like you to work hard to keep your uh, length of your wire uh, to um, uh, three to four millimeters. Um, the uh, flip, flip chip is another area that we're seeing increased um, interest in. And um, just a couple comments uh, here. Um, uh, one is the pictures on the, the right-hand side indicate a recent job that we did uh, for a customer. Um, it was actually a customer was uh, just uh, checking our, our process capability. This is a die that's flipped onto a uh, substrate. The, the pitch of the balls and the pitch of the, um, the lands are about 80 micron pitch, and the die has about a 28 micron standoff. Um, and um, we are working now to develop um, capability to flip on to 40 micron um, um, pitch um, uh, lands. Um, and so we will have that capability uh, sh uh, shortly. Um, and we also have uh, laser attach um, in development. Um, I kind of gloss over the first bullet here, which is really important. Um, if you're flip chipping, uh, keep in mind that if you're flip chipping a optoelectronic device, a.k.a. a laser, um, that um, precise alignment is required for the light source into the waveguide. Um, and then when we're soldering that, um, you know, a good solder connection that gets reflowed is, um, is important as well. If you have two of these devices on the same chip, um, one of the things you should keep in mind is that the second device that gets flip chipped on um, cannot, um, uh, should not impact the first chip that was flip chipped on. So meaning that the reflow temperature for the second device, the second chip that's uh, flip chipped on, should not reflow the first one. Because if it does, we will use, uh, lose uh, optical alignment. So we'd like to work with you on the metallurgy uh, that's required um, for the two devices to ensure that we don't get into a situation where we've uh, placed uh, one die um, and then uh, it loses its position because of the temperature required for the second die. And then lastly, uh, just some general comments um, about uh, how we operate um, I thought might be important uh, for you to know. Um, you know, tap a uh, packages die that's fabricated at any quality foundry. Um, we like to work with the AIM uh, foundry in Albany because we know the quality of the die coming out of there is exceptional. Um, but if you have die um, or wafers from another foundry, we're interested in working with you um, on uh, those uh, parts as well. Um, we're an open access facility meaning that we're not tied to uh, one entity and, and, and um, uh, our services are open to, um, you know, government, uh, commercial, uh, academic uh, institutions uh, that, uh, that need work done. And since we're a development facility, 
um, and uh, low, uh, low volume early hardware facility. Um, we have no objection to working um, with low quantities. Um, our tools are operated by TAP employees that are experienced um, um, employees. Um, and so we're a little bit different than what you might find at a academic institution where you can buy time on in their nano labs um, or microelectronic labs and go in and operate the tools. Um, you know, there's a place for that kind of a facility for sure. Um, this facility, um, you know, we are um, very careful uh, to protect the operational, um, um, the operation of the tools to make certain that we give you the very best every time um, in terms of the work that we do for you. Um, engaging TAP during the design process, in, in, um, said a different way, design for packaging um, is always leads to better success. So we'd encourage you to get us involved very early on in the process. Um, because if you get us involved very early on in the process, we can help you avoid many of the pitfalls um, that we just uh, talked about um, in the last uh, couple slides here. And then lastly, um, uh, folks asked me, so what is the engagement process? And um, I just have this one graphic that I often show to customers. Um, once you contact TAP, um, we will um, more than likely engage in um, uh, you know, getting an NDA in process that uh, uh, allows you to protect your information, but also allows us to protect our process information. Um, we'll then follow that with a statement of work so we're clear and crisp on exactly what you're looking for us to do. Um, and then um, once we settle on a statement of work, um, we'll provide back to the customer a quote um, so then you'll, at the end of that process, you'll know exactly what you're going to get, what you will know exactly what you're asking TAP to do, and you know exactly what you're getting from TAP, and you know exactly how much it's going to cost. Um, and then we'll enter into the TAP facility services agreement, which is a contract with T's and C's, and then we can begin work. So that gives you an overview of, um, of, of TAP. Um, and I um, appreciate uh, your attention, and I appreciate your interest um, in uh, the AIM Photonics Test Assembly and Packaging Facility located in Rochester, New York. And just a reminder, my name is Ed White, and uh, feel free to uh, contact me, and I can provide um, information um, uh, if it wasn't in this uh, presentation that you might need. Thank you very much, and have a good day.